Greetings, fellow Gorehounds, and welcome back to a Blood Splattered vlog. I'm the Horror Guru. And I'm Count Dracula. And today we're going to talk about Mad God, which is a Shudder original stop motion animated masterpiece by uh, effects guru uh, Phil Tippett, who some of you may know as the guy who was responsible for all those raptors up in the kitchen in fucking uh, Jurassic Park. Yeah, yeah. And before <laughs> that, he designed a lot of Star Wars stuff. Yep. yep. Jabba the Hutt. Absolutely. Fucking Sarlacc. Fucking the man has done everything in terms of stop motion and puppetry special effects. And this movie, Mad God, is a stop motion project that he has been working on for like 20 years. Yeah. Like he's been working on it on and off for a long ass time. So it really is, for all intents and purposes, his masterpiece that he's been- Yeah, it's his opus. That he's been crafting for a while. And wow, is it a fucking crazy ride. One thing to note before entering this movie is that it, it while it has narratives and is somewhat a narrative in and of itself, it's not a narrative-based movie. It's definitely an art piece. It is an art piece that is stream of conscious and is intentionally dreamlike. So it's more about the feeling and the sensations and the visuals than any actual like plot A leads to plot B or yeah. plot C, you know? Yeah, and uh, yeah, okay, like watching this movie, I'll tell you one thing, you will never forget what a Phil Tip moment is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Phil Tip moment is when something is happening and then just all of a sudden some creature eats another creature. Yep. Yep. You know, like like in like in Return of the Jedi, they they pull back on Jabba's palace and there's that one frog thing. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> That's Phil Tip moment. And, and the main appeal of this movie is all the weird and cool designs that he creates throughout this movie. He crafts this really dystopian, fucked up universe, this whole world of creatures and monsters and a whole societies that have yeah. sprung up within this monstrous world that are they, they kind of resemble things that humans know but are also off yeah. and different and weird and like everything's biomechanical and like fused together and oh, like, yeah yeah it's got everything is like it feels very much like it looks very much like a tool video because everything is like yeah. rusted creepy meat 100 you know? like a fucking two hour long tool video yeah <laughs> is what it feels yeah. like to the point where i would love to see someone cut this entire thing and just put tool music underneath it. Oh, geez, that'd be so easy, <laughs> you know? Absolutely. Also, like, old Nine Inch Nails videos, like the 90s. Mm. It definitely has that Yeah, vibe. during the, the era of, like, uh, Hurt and Downward Spiral. Like, everything in this movie, like, it, it feels like Phil Tepet is that kid, the, uh, Sid, in Toy Story. Oh, yes. And he's, like, taking, like, a bunch oh, of yes. toys and, like, molded them into these weird monstrosities. Doctor, you've done it! <laughs> yeah. <you know? laughs> Absolutely. And he's been doing this for 20 years and he's here to show you all the weird fucking designs he's come up with in that time. Yeah, well, it was like, it was like, like one of those things where people are like, oh my God, what would Sid be like today? And I'm like, oh, he'd be a special effects guy. Yeah, yeah. You know, like, what are you talking about? <laughs> he'd be an animator. What, 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 of course he would be. Like, he's just too weird to be anything else. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> And while, while, while it is very stream of consciousness, there is somewhat of a narrative in this, but it's like, it's more of like a, like, I, I, like a theme. Like obviously the dystopian world within this universe is supposed to somewhat mirror problems in our universe. Yeah. But like through a really distorted, like, yeah, biomechanical very lens. Yeah, funhouse lens. Yeah. Very nasty funhouse lens. Another movie it very much resembles is uh, Mirror Mask. Yeah, 100%. I was thinking that too. Definitely has got that Mirror Mask vibe. You know, that, 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 the David McKean movie with all the weird yeah. David McKean, you know, like stop motion. For most, for, okay, for chunks of the movie, you follow like a character who I think in the credits is listed as the assassin, which mm. is a very interesting title for the character in retrospect. Yeah. Um, uh, it, which is like this guy in like this like mask in the suit who looks like he just he came out of like a like World War Two bomber like yeah yeah outfit. he looks like he came out of World War One with the yeah. fucking gas mask yeah. and like fucking everything he's like almost a he looks like a like a early twentieth century like plague yeah kind of thing and we're like you know? following 
one or more versions of this character walking through this universe while like walking through war zones that look very much like World War One and World War Two. Yeah. Walking through like these weird societies that look like they're built kind of like the interior of like automotive factories. Yeah. Like where everything's like factory made. It, like also going through like what looks like ghettos where like it's trash piled upon trash piled upon trash and people and creatures living in those fucking things. Yeah. And there's a lot, there's also a lot of like industry for no discernible purpose. Yes. Yes. Another movie this reminded me of was Eraserhead. Oh yeah. Oh that, yeah. Like that, like that anxiety of the industrialized world kind of yes. like, yes, you know, not to mention there's a point in which there's like a fucking screaming baby running around that, that reminded me of the eraser. Yeah. Baby. <laughs> oh man. We'll talk more about that when we get to the spoilers, because I think the baby kind of does lead into like the theme, the actual, yeah, this is a hard movie to spoil because it's yeah. very weird. Yeah. I'm going to save like what happens at the very end for the spoiler section. Cause I think that kind of like reveals a little bit. Yeah. That like, reveals a little bit. Yeah. yeah. But it almost like has this vibe, like we're watching a character cause they're keep going lower and lower. Into yeah. This there's world. A di yeah. It's definitely like a Dante's Inferno. They aspect. come from the sky. He comes from the sky, lands on a surface and then just starts digging deeper and deeper and going through tunnels and then like going to like the core of this world. So there's like this vibe, like we're going through Dante's Inferno, yeah, right? You yeah. know, kind of has that vibe, but like the layers of hell all mirror like the real world, right? Like he's, yeah. like, he's going through war, industry and various other things. Yeah, yeah. It's like, these are these are the modern nine circles, mm -hmm. you know? Um, oh, man. And the fact that the story is called Mad God. Mad God, yeah. Know? It opens up with Leviticus. Yeah, so, yeah. You know? <laughs> so, like, it's that, that that's all obviously intentional. Yeah, 100%. 100%. You know, you could probably, you could probably really make a, you know, make a meal out of, like, dissecting this movie for all of the direct oh, God, references yeah. it's making. Oh yeah, yeah. This is a thing where every frame is a fucking art piece. Yeah. You know? Oh man. And you look at it and you go like, man, it would have taken forever just to do this scene. And there's, we still got like an hour and a half to go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because full length movie. <laughs> you know. You know. I was expecting this to be like a watch. I thought it was. I was expecting yeah. it to be like forty five minutes, given yep. it was like stop motion. Well, it's like an hour and a half. There's also know? like a nice mix of effects throughout the movie. The main core of it is a lot of stop motion, but he also uses puppetry at certain points. And there's points where it's literally just a person in a costume. Yeah, it's this is this is every fucking trick in the book. Yeah, you know, that it's him. Be used. It's him showing everything he's learned throughout his entire career as an effects guy. Yeah, yeah. Including like green screening and things like yep. that. You 100%. know, I, you can tell it it's one of those things where I'm like, I know that there are going to be sets from this thing that are actually like complete pieces. Oh, I guarantee it. You I know, it. but I can, you can also tell that some of this is going to be, some of it's going to be a big deposit. Yeah. You know, there's also cool little Easter eggs throughout it. Like, like some of like, like there's a point in which he's going through like this valley of statues. He's like lowering himself through like a canyon of statues, is a better yeah. description of it. And some of the statues are like, monsters from old movies and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Robbie the Robot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and things like that, you know, and you're like, did he just like take toys? And yeah, yeah. Just make him part of exactly. the background, you know? Exactly. I'm pretty sure one of the Cyclops from Cyclops. Yeah, the Cyclops from fucking Sinbad. Uh, Sinbad exactly. Sinbad's in there. Yeah. Is, 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 is somewhere in there. And so you're just like, oh man. So like he's using everything he's got. And I, I would love to see like a mad god, like art gallery where he puts everything on display. Oh yeah. Oh, that'd be amazing. You know, because you can tell that some of the things he made are like huge. Oh, yeah. Like on the screen, like you can tell the difference between like a, a stop motion puppet that's a really tiny one and one that's a huge. Yeah, one, one that's like mm -hmm. that big, you know. This is also a movie with very little dialogue. There is dialogue. It's very minimal. Yeah. Um, only in select parts. But most of it is just senses. You're hearing like weird noises like there's a point in which he's walking through this weird industrial zone and there's just like a baby crying on like the yeah on the fuck on, on the, the flaxons yeah yeah <laughs> you know it's a lot of weird senses that just put you in this really uncomfortable mode throughout it 
you know, and you even get the 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 the, uh, the the vibe that the baby crying is like literally the boss of the industrialized yeah. zone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's just like, what is going on? There's this weird fucking like plague doctor witch at one point, and this weird fucking alchemist goblin. <laughs> I don't know what else to call these things. Yeah, yeah. There's they. I, I, I'm sure they have actual names in the credits, but everything is so weird that you kind of got to guess what everything yeah. is when when they get to that. You know? I love the junkyard monster that eats the other monster. Oh the yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because that happened. That happened several times. Yeah, get this Phil Tippett. You gotta have that. Unfortunately, like 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 most of this is just us saying, "Oh man, I like that scene. I like this scene." Because yeah, it, this this is a movie that is. In, intended to be watched mm -hmm. you know it's not it ain't it ain't about the plot but i will talk more if you want to know like my thoughts on like the meanings of the movie a little bit we're gonna go a little bit yeah. more in depth into that when we get to the spoiler section and talk about the end of the movie because i think it's very revealing as to what oh yeah you know phil tepid is trying to say if he's trying to say anything like you know like, yeah 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 which i, I guarantee he is the yeah. question is whether or not he realizes what it is well, because sometimes people build things and they're like what were you well, saying with this like i don't fucking know it, it's one you of, know? <laughs> it's one of those things where like you're kind of getting a peek into his view of the world and how horrible the world is yeah and whether or not he's saying anything specific with that other than this is how the I, the world as i see it is you know like it doesn't need to be more than that right yeah 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 it can just be like it could just be an examination of the sisyphean nature yeah. of the modern world you this know? is like, truly art as an expression yes yeah it is it is intended to express an emotion mm -hmm. and feeling and a sensation of a kind of horror and yet ghoulish glee yes you can tell he's having fun throughout it yeah even though it's really fucking dark and fucked up yeah you know ghoulish glee and 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 dark things and it's just really cool i could definitely this is definitely one of those ones where i could see myself like just kind of watching this a million times and just like going over everything that's happening another movie reminds me of pink floyd's the wall Oh yes, yes. Yeah, like well, especially once we get to that one monster. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, shitting on everything. Oh my god, the you weird know? shitting bull thing <laughs> that's like ruling the industrial zone. Yeah, you're like what? Whatever the you fuck know? that thing was. This movie is a Shutter original, so if you want to watch it, you're gonna have to watch it on Shutter. I'm sure it'll be available some pla other places soon, but for now, it's on Shutter. So if you want to watch it, go subscribe yeah, there. Which is it's a good place for it to be because, yeah. like, if you like Shutter, you're probably gonna like this. Oh, for sure. You know, <laughs> that's called finding the audience for sure. And with that said, my fellow Gorehounds, let us move on to the spoilers. All right, so the the loose narrative throughout this movie is you have this weird assassin guy who who's called the assassin. Uh, he's wandering through uh, this zone and he's got a map that's leading him somewhere and he's got this briefcase he's carrying with him. He eventually finds the place where he's supposed to place the briefcase. He opens it up and we realize it's a bomb. Yeah. And then he's setting this bomb in this one spot. And we also notice that he's surrounded by briefcases. So he's not the first person. Yeah, to try to blow this place up. Yeah. yeah. But then he gets captured uh, by a weird mutant thing. And then the society that he is captured by puts him on display and like performs these surgeries on him. Yeah. Uh, ultimately culminating in them pulling this weird baby out of him. Yeah, yeah, and that's when it starts to resemble a race, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but then we, like, reveal that he was sent there by this character who in the credits is listed as the last man. Yep. Who lives in the sky above, so I guess they're the mad god. They're the mad god, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, maybe they're a metaphor for Phil Tippett himself. I don't know. Well, that's that's I that I was feeling that too. Where yeah. I was like, you could tell that a lot of what is going on is also a, if it's on top of anything else that it is, is a commentary of the emotional struggle of being a stop motion artist. Yeah, yeah. You know, like especially when you get to the industrial scenes where like it's all of this work is being done to just build things that don't matter. They don't do yeah. anything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they just fall over. And you're just like, why are you doing all this stuff just to do that? Oh, it's a metaphor yeah. for stop motion. Okay. 
So then the the, the last man uh, consults some witches, which then reveal to him another map. And then he sends another assassin down who finds a Jeep and then drives through these weird war zones, never to be seen from again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, and he's like, what, did, did he make it? Like, where did he get to? Uh, and then we end up cutting back to the baby which is brought to this weird witch doctor looking fucking Yeah, like thing. a plague doctor witch, yeah. you know? Who takes it to this weird alchemist guy who fucking crumbles it into like metal dust and then creates a new universe, which then quickly descends into the same chaos as their current universe. Yep. And the movie ends there. Um, which I think kind of reveals like the whole theme of the movie. This whole movie is about the cycle of of human destruction. Yeah. You yeah. know, that's why everything's in industry and war and all these super destructive fucking human creations. Yeah. And uh, that it's a, a continuous and an endless cycle. And even starting anew again, we'll just repeat the cycle anew. Yeah. Yeah, it's like God, man, you know, man constantly creates a world that yeah. God destroys. Yeah, know? yeah. Like, <laughs> and they get, and the, and the, and part of that is us trying to to, to fend off the inevitable for as yeah. long as possible. Yeah, you know, like we're, the, the apocalypse is coming. One day it'll get here. Yeah, yeah. You know, but maybe not today. Yeah, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and so while there's a lot going on in this movie, and there's individual commentaries on individual scenes, like the whole industry scene is very much a commentary on the way, like. Uh, the industrialized world doesn't give a shit about the average man. Oh, yeah, like, yeah. It cares for what it does, yeah. but sometimes it doesn't even know what that is. Yeah, and how disposable a worker is. Yeah. You know, because you have, like, all these little straw man worker guys, and they're just constantly being killed by the very industry that they're propelling. Yeah. But then once they're killed, a new one just takes their place, and they, yeah, yeah, they yeah. keep doing the job. Yeah, and at the end of the day, like, what is what is the machine actually accomplish? It's just setting up dominoes. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just setting up dominoes, and the cycle continues. It's a cycle in and of itself. Yeah, it reminded me a lot of that. Um, there was my favorite part. One of my favorite parts of uh, the show Gravity Falls is actually the putt putt golf course. Yeah, yeah. Where they do the whole like John Henry sequence, where his little yep. guy is like moving the fucking golf ball like you know through the tunnel. Yep. Do thing. No, Big Henry. Uh, go home, Polly. <laughs> you know, and, and, and you know he dies. Big Henry dies, and then we pull out. And then the ball just comes out of the fucking yeah 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 it's out of the fucking hole. <laughs> oh my god! And there is this reoccurring kind of theme of everybody being like a cog in this weird fucking war machine. Yeah, this weird machine. Yeah, you and know? there's not even like a discernible enemy. No, you know, it's just there's just this is war. Who's yeah, fighting. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. it's like it's like it's definitely a commentary on the endless cycle of war that humans find themselves. Yeah, in, right? yeah, yeah. Because the the two, I don't even think we actually see like armies fight. Nope. You we know? see a lot of explosions. We see guns going off. We yeah. see fucking anti air fucking. Yeah, we see like we see all the machines of war. Yeah. But we don't see an yeah. army. Yep. You know, we just see like the, the people who like operate the machines and make them. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. You know, and like it's a lot of the stuff in the beginning seems to exist for partially to perpetuate this war, but at the same yeah. time, potentially stop the assassin from fucking making groundfall. Yeah. Who it sounds like maybe trying to stop the war by just destroying everything. Just, but blowing everything up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Just be like, no, I, I don't know. Just, you know, the intentions aren't entirely clear, but that's kind of the point. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know why. Yeah. The, the, the fucking. The, the assassin in the Jeep is a part of the movie I didn't quite get because, well, yeah. <laughs> because I'm like, well, does he just, wait, did he just disappear or not? Well, I think you know? the idea is, is that even the assassin is replaceable, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Like, and it's a cycle with the assassin too. Yeah, but we spend so much time with the assassin. That's true. Guy. That's true. We spend a lot like, of time with him. Yeah, we spend like a good 20 minutes with the dude as he continues the journey. <laughs> it's and true. I'm like, well, or he's gonna get somewhere, right? I like think he goes through some gates, and that's the last we see of him. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, just like whoosh, they're done. And I'm like, okay, I think I'm gonna need to see this a second time to understand what that part was about. Yeah, for sure. You for know, sure. 
By the way, if you've seen the movie and you've got a theory or you noticed oh, yeah. something we missed, please fucking make it. Obviously, comment. this is a movie that's open to interpretation. So I'm just throwing out like like the vibes I got from it. Like, yeah. feel free to let us know below what you got from it. Because I'm sure everyone's yes. going to have slightly different takes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because it's like, you know, much like a racer head. Yeah. You know? yeah. Like, it's it's that type of movie. Yep. You know, if you, if, if oh, man, it's like a racer head cross with like a Looney Tunes cartoon. It kind of is, yeah. One moment I really, really like, because I don't know if it was like an intended commentary or whatever, but like the, that that nurse that, you know, does her nursing job and then goes and carries the baby to the witch, the witch play yeah, doctor. Yeah, the, the play doctor witch, yeah. Um, and, and then like her job's done. And so she goes and like goes home, but her home is just like this hole in the wall with a fucking like straw bed and crawls in and lays in there. So she has this really important fucking job that she does or whatever, but she still lives in like abject poverty. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. Her life still sucks. You know? You know, her, her only benefit is that she's got her own hole in the ground. Yeah. You know? <laughs> like, like, I don't know if it was an intentional commentary on the way well, we, I feel like it must we treat been. service people, but like. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I absolutely think that that was the case because I mean, Come on. Because we do take like time off of like the main plot thread, so to speak, to like follow her for a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, like, it start like think about it this way. In America, if you are a healthcare worker, yeah. you are not guaranteed healthcare. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like, wait a minute. Yeah. Like it's fucking fucked up. wait a minute. <laughs> it's fucked up. <laughs> you know, like one of the people that makes it happen, shouldn't that be available to you? You're right there, you know? No. No, 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 that would cost money. I know, I know. You know that, it costs money to, to save human lives. <laughs> so human lives have to be disposed in order to save human lives. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> One scene that I don't know necessarily what the point was, but I loved watching it was like the two trolls that are stabbing each other constantly. <laughs> There's a lot of weird, cool little monsters throughout. Like, there's just, there's these weird, like, spider fucking doll head things. They look like they're straight out of fucking um, uh, 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 Toy Story. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Know? Phil Tepet definitely, whatever he wanted to express, he expressed it. And he yeah. fucking went all in on it. And yeah, yeah, this is the, like, like, th th this is the kind of thing that should open up the Modern Museum of Art. Man. Agreed. Because it is a complete work of art. Yeah. 100 percent yeah like this is damn like this is gonna blow somebody this is gonna blow somebody's mind. oh for for sure for you sure. know like th this is gonna be one of those things that like i can see this like fucking becoming very influential in the future yeah. you know much more fucked up but another movie it kind of like reminds me a little bit about is like fantasia yeah you know that same kind of like weird yeah. dreamlike stream of consciousness like Vibe. Yeah, yeah. Any of the really like super dream like weird movies mm -hmm. like that tend to go on and like influence mm -hmm. like gener a generation later. This was not done for the intention of making money. This was no done with the intention of inspiring other artists. This was a labor of fucking. Oh love. yeah. So uh, with all of that said, where can they find you, Count Jack? Yo? Oh, you could find me on Twitter at Counting Jack, where I tweet a lot. <laughs> I tweet a lot. I tweet. I, 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 I have a. I think I have a problem. I, 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 have a, I gotta get my tweets, man. I gotta get my tweets. <laughs> gotta get my tweets, my tweets, and my twats. You know, I gotta gotta have it all. Where I, uh, uh, on top of following a lot of lewd accounts, I also follow a lot of horror accounts, mm -hmm. and I like a lot of horror and horror accounts. Horror and horror. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I also stream throughout the week. Um, on YouTube and Twitch. My Twitch account is Count Jackula. It's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Count underscore Jackula. True. Search me on Twitch, I'll be there. And you can also find me on Instagram. I am on Instagram a lot. I just don't post a lot. I, yeah. I'm a, I'm a uh, what, do you, what do you call it? A lurker. <laughs> I'm an Instagram lurker, you know? <laughs> Y'all know me, I'm the Horror Guru. You can find me at the Horror Guru on Twitter, on Twitch, on Instagram, and Facebook. Just look up the Horror Guru or Blizzard Cinema and I'll be there. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and don't forget to ring that notification bell so that you're notified of our videos immediately upon their upload. And if you'd like to help out either of us more directly, be sure to check out our Patreon pages. And remember, if you decide to go the Patreon route, even a dollar a month can go a long way. 
And with that said, my fellow Gorehounds, and you made it this far into the vlog, then I want you to comment below and be sure to comment below using the hashtag creeping evil meat. That way I know, that way Jack knows, that way the whole world knows you watch this vlog all the way through. And with that said, my fellow Gorehounds, we got one more vlog to record this week because we got to catch up. Um, it was, was a slow couple of weeks for us, and we're finally trying to get back into the vlogging things. Yeah. So, and uh, with that said, peace out, and I'll catch you all later.